Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.7, part 1. We're going to look at adding and subtracting fractions. In this first part, we're actually going to look at like fractions, which means they have the same denominator. Now, we encounter fractions every day. Uh, one example is maybe you're in the kitchen and you're baking something. And it call, your recipe might call for 3 halves of flour, 3 halves of cup of flour. But you only have a 1 half measuring cup. So what would you do? Well, you would measure out 1 half of a cup, add it, another 1 half of a cup, add it, another 1 half of a cup, and add it. So you're adding 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half to get the total amount the recipe calls for, such as 3 halves. So we're going to add fractions. And like I said, like denominators mean they have the same denominator. And our example is if I have a divided by b plus c divided by b, these fractions, I can just add the numerators. a plus c are both divided by b. As we can see, they're both divided by b here. So we can add them, and they'd both be divided. Now, that also applies to subtraction. If I have a over b minus c over b, we get a minus c over b. We just subtract the numerators. So let's look at an example. If I have 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, something that we actually encounter on a regular daily basis, maybe I have a, a quarter, another name for this, a quarter plus a quarter. Well, if I had two quarters, I'd have 50 cents as an example, or half a dollar. So let's see how that works. If I have 1 fourth and 1 fourth, same denominator, 1 plus 1 is 2 quarters, or 2 fourths. Well, when it comes to fractions, we should always reduce them. And I know that 2 and 4 have a common factor of 2. So I can rewrite this by dividing a 2 out of each of these to get 1 half. So 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 2 fourths, which reduces to 1 half. Let's see if we have 3 quarters. Another example is maybe I have 3 quarters, or 75 cents. And I'm going to take away one of those quarters. Well, they have the same denominator. Everything's quarters or fourths in this case. So I can subtract the numerators. 3 minus 1 is 2 over our like denominator of 4. And again, 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. What if I don't know my denominator? What if it's a variable like in this example? And it's also, we're dealing with integers. Some might be positive or negative. So because the denominators are the same, all I have to do is combine the numerators. It's negative 3 plus 1. Well, they have different signs, so I'm going to find their difference. Their difference is going to be negative 2. Negative 3 plus 1 is going to be negative 2. The larger value is negative, which determines the sign. Now, my denominator is the same, so they're both over the same denominator. So when I combine them, I get negative 2 over x. And that can't be simplified because I have to treat x as a prime number. I don't know what it is. Now, what if the variable is in the numerator? Well, this is where we review what we covered before, and that's like terms. Since our denominators are the same, that's not going to change. It's going to be 16. And I have 15 b's, and I'm going to add 7 b's. Well, think of those b's as apples. If I have 15 apples and I add 7 apples, well, those are like fruit. So I can combine them. 15 and 7 is going to give me 22 of these b's. And now I look and say, well, 22 and 16 have a common factor. They're both even numbers, so I can divide out a 2. So I'm going to take it a little bit further and divide 2 out of this, which leaves me with 11 b's. And 2 out of that is 8. So I have 11b over 8 as my simplified answer. All right, let's look at another example on this board here. We're going to, asked, we're going to be asked to evaluate for uh, an expression. We're given x equals negative 1 6 and y equals 5 6. Well, because our input values that we're going to put in for x and y are fractions, here we have an example where we're adding fractions. So I'm going to rewrite this. My x value is negative 1 6. And I'm going to add the y value, which is 5 6. Now this is similar to the previous example. Now that we have it here, we see we have a common denominator. So I can write it over that common denominator. Negative 1 
plus 5. We're just going to combine the numerators. Well, different signs. I'm going to find their difference. Their difference is 4. The larger value is positive, so my value is positive. I have 4, 6, which should be reduced. And I can reduce a 2 out of both of these, so this becomes 2 thirds. This example, we're going to subtract. So I'm going to evaluate for my given x value of negative 1, 6. And I'm going to subtract 5, 6. And now we can see the denominator hasn't changed. Again, it's still the same, but we have subtraction. Well, because these are integers, I assess and say, well, they have the same sign. So I'm going to combine. Negative 1 and negative 5 is negative 6. And now I look at this and say, well, we have one negative, so my value is going to be negative. And I can actually do this division. They're both 6. Anything divided by itself is 1. So my final solution is negative 1. Let's look at an application problem that deals with fractions. Here we have Joe worked 1 -fifth of an hour on Saturday and 3 fifths of an hour on Sunday. How long did Joe work over the two days? So I read it, and now I'm just going to assess, do I understand what's happening here? Well, Joe worked 1 -fifth of an hour. Well, that's not much. Maybe he was just checking emails or something. 1 -fifth of an hour on Saturday and 3 -fifths of an hour on Sunday. How long did Joe work over the two days? By reading it the second time, I know I'm given the values of 1 -fifth and 3 -fifths. And I want to find their total. How long is this? over the whole of two days. So to find a total, I'm going to add them together. And we can see, OK, we're adding fractions. They have the same denominator. So I can just keep that denominator and add the numerators. 1 plus 3 is 4. And then I assess, can I reduce this? No, nope, 4 and 5 do not have any common factors. So this is the total. Now, because it's an application problem, I'm going to read it again and make sure that I have everything I need. How long did Joe work over the two days? Well, 4 fifths of what? We always have to have a unit. He worked 4 fifths of an hour. And that would be how we approach application problems. Always remember, read, read, read. Attempt to assemble a problem and solve it. And then read it again. Make sure you have all the pieces of it to answer the question. So this has been 2.7, part one. Thank you for watching.